I think it's worth it. All right. Anyhow, uh, chap we're in chapter eight and uh, or chapter seven was kind of an interlude interlude between the uh, the sixth seal and the seventh seal. And of course, last last week we looked at chapter seven. It's kind of like a panoramic view, I believe, of all that's taking place. And of course, it ends it ends it ended up at the at the at the end of uh, end of the tribulation or whatever, and and the establishment of, of the Lord's kingdom. But anyhow, now we're picking back up to the seventh seal. And again, remember, I, I really I probably started to uh, to draw a little picture, but uh, you got six seals. And then, the end, and then the seventh seal comes along, and that's what we're in now. You're going to find the seventh seal brings about, uh, well, let's go ahead and look at it, and then we'll talk about it. It says, and when he had opened the seventh seal, uh, there was silence in heaven for a space of half an hour. Now, that's, that's, that's interesting, man. silence in heaven. In other words, it's like um, uh, like nothing's going on. I mean, it's it was it's so important, I guess you could say, that there's no there's there's silence, and it says for half an hour. Now, uh, I don't know exactly how they how they come up with this, but it's a short period of time uh, that the that the that the seal is opened, the seventh seal is broken and opened up, but the silence is in heaven. Uh, in other words, I think it's kind of like uh, um, kind of like the Lord is saying, all right, pay close attention to what's coming now. And, and it's because it's important. And he said, I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. All right, to the seventh seal, remember, God brings about, it brings about these seven angels, and these seven angels are given seven trumpets. So you got the, you got this, the seven seals, the seventh seal gives seven trumpets. And then the seventh, you're going to find out when we get to the end of the seventh trumpet, it's going to bring about seven vials. And so that each one is, is building upon itself or on, on, on this previous one. It says, I saw the seven angels and they stood before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Now, one of the things you might not, uh, uh, the seven angels, uh, they were given trumpets. Uh, trumpets is all in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the nation of history. Uh, they stood for, they, they were used in several different occasions. They were used uh, to call the people together as an assembly. Uh, they had a certain blast that they blasted on the trumpet that tell, told the people that they wanted to come together. And, and uh, that's one of the things, one of the uh, sounds on the trumpet. Another sound on the trumpet, a different type of blast on the trumpet, called the people uh, to... Uh, uh, to prepare for to prepare for war, uh, to 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 give them a, a, a opportunity to get their swords and their shields or whatever it was that they got at that time, and get ready for get ready for a battle. The third thing that they were uh, the uh, the trumpet was used for with a different blast again was to break camp. In other words, they were supposed to get up and and follow the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire. And that's the, the third thing that the trumpet was based based upon. So it's battle or or for travel or for assembly. It's, it's the three things that the trumpet was used for. Well, anyhow, these trumpets here are seven of them. And each one of them, I think, is, will have a different meaning. But I believe that they go along with this, they go along with the, the, the in, in many respects, what, what the, the Jews used the trumpets for. But anyhow, it says the angel stood at the altar, having a gold golden uh, cen censer, basically something to hold it and there. And there was given it to him much incense, and he stood afar, stood off, it uh, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. All right, the the, the uh, here the, uh, uh, the angel is 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 at the altar. Now, you understand that what's in heaven is very similar to what was on the tabernacle for the Jews or for the later on for the, for the temple. And they all, one of the things that, they, that, 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 that the Jews would do uh, was when they would take coals from the fire uh, from, the, uh, from the altar where they would burn those sacrifices and they would take them and, and put them in at, at the altar of incense. And then they would also put in, uh, certain stuff on it that 
to give it a, an odor. And it, that was inside the holy place. And it's something similar to, is going on here. When the angel stood at the altar, you see, at the altar, that's where the sacrifices were made, having a golden uh, censer, a, a golden thing to hold stuff in, and was giving it to him incense. And he should offer the prayers of all the saints. What this is saying is the prayers are like these, this incense that's going, this incense would go up before uh, the Holy of Holies, or right at the back of the holy place into the Holy of Holies where the Lord was at, you might say, in, in the, for the Jewish people. That smell would go up and, and, and enter into the Holy of Holies. It's like the, and it's, it's here you're seeing that that's the way the prayers of the saints are, that they go up before, before the Lord. Uh, a, a kind of a side note here it shows you that our prayers don't we don't necessarily have to feel they've made it because they have made it that's one of the things if we offer them up I know there's a lot of times when we pray and we think well I, it didn't get no further than the ceiling but that's not the case the Lord hears them though we may not know it and he may and he answers them though he may not answer them the way we expect uh, that's where that's where trust and faith comes in, but he hears the prayers, and and he does and, and just like it says here, the prayers of how many saints? All the saints, all the saints that have ever prayed. Those prayers have gone up before him. Uh, it's the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne, and then of course that the golden altar would be basically like the. Uh, uh, in, to look at it like the Jews would be the uh, mercy seat, the holy of holies, where God was God, where God resides. Um, it's like kind of, it's like a throne, and the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So you see, it's coming up and it's going before God, and the angel took the uh, censer and filled it with the fire from the altar and cast it to the earth. And there was voices and thunders and lightning and earthquake. Now, this is a uh, this is interesting because this this angel now takes this uh, uh, the fire that was producing that in, that that uh, uh, smell before the Lord, and he cast it to the earth. And when he cast it to the earth, it says there were many voices. Uh, I think voices of or you might say of of the answers of the prayers and the many thunders and lightnings and earthquakes. All this indicates a, as a message of judgment uh, for what to a answering, the, answering the prayers of the saints. Because all through this last 2,000 years of the church history, uh, we, have all, uh, we as, church, uh, as the church have prayed for the deliverance, have prayed for the Lord setting things right when uh, when, when uh, when evil would seem to be triumphing, we've all those those are the prayers of all the saints. The Lord now here is beginning to answer that prayer. That's what this is. What's, what's taking place here? He's he's bringing those uh those, those prayers and the results of those prayers because the results of those prayers would be the fire, and and the angel is taking that and get, and and uh, applying it to the earth. And of course, so that brings about judgment, you might say, or answers of seven of the uh, uh, of the prayers of the saints. And in verse six says, "And seven angels which had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them." So you see, now this is the the seventh seal. Now has brought about seven trumpets. Uh, ain't it interesting how many times you see the number seven? And th throughout the history, you see, it's just one. This is just a, a, a example, but the number seven is probably uh, in Scripture. I think probably the most important number there is, uh, and right behind it would be three, it, or maybe maybe three would be equal to it because there's the the uh, the, the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's also the uh, the three days that the Lord was in the tomb. Uh, there's many things that three stands for but here you see it's uh, an indication of seven and it says in the seventh angel the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound so now the 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 beginning of the trumpets are really taking place the lord is is 
sent the fire to the earth, you might say, and, and, uh, and it said, I'm going to start answering the prayers of these saints. And that's what was take, going to take place. So the blowing of the trumpets is answering the prayers of the saints. You see, you see what I'm saying here? The prayers of the saints have brought about uh, uh, these, seven, these seven trumpets. All right, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were, they were cast upon the earth. And a third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned, burned up. Uh, this is not going to be a pleasant time to be, if you're not, if you're, if, but if, if you're not uh, in the Lord's, in, in the Lord's family, uh, these things that are going to take place on the earth are, are judgments. It's not just, uh, it's the wrath, the wrath. A better way of calling it is the wrath that's coming to the earth. <clears throat> and it's, here it says that a, a third part of the trees were burned up. All the green grass, that's interesting, was burned up uh, when this first trumpet sounded. And then the second angel sounded, the next verse. They're going to go through fast here for a little bit. And the second angel sounded, and there, uh, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And a third part of the sea became blood. Um, there's a lot of people that speculate to what some of this stuff is, uh, and I I tend to agree with them in some ways. In some ways, I, I think I'm a little skeptical of what. But some people believe that uh, this is probably an asteroid or something of that nature that get, that hits into the sea. <coughs> Excuse me. Could be. But whatever the whatever the uh, whatever it is, it says that uh, a third part of the sea became blood. Uh, and I, when it says blood, I I don't mean I, I don't think it means that it become red. I think it means it become blood, because that's what it said. Um, I don't know if that could be the blood of the of the what's in the sea uh, when when the when it happened, but whatever it is that that uh, I believe it kills a lot of the uh, life in the sea. And regardless, then 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 you come to the third the third uh, 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 angel. Excuse no, not not the third angel. Another verse here says, and then that. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life, died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. That's a lot of a lot of destruction. A third part of all the, the sea life is killed. A third part of the, all the uh, the ships and so forth were destroyed. It gives you an indication that where it struck was it, it affected about a third of the sea, or a third of the planet, you might say, or at least the water part. Uh, wouldn't be a lot of fishing there, would they, Bobby? There wouldn't be a lot of fishing after that took place. It'd kill all the all the animals and all the sea life. And then the then the third then the third angel sounded, and there fell out a great uh, a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, as a lamp. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. Uh, you see, here again, you see, it's a third of it. It's, it's affecting a third of the of the of the rivers, a third of the uh, um, uh, all the, all the fountains of the waters, or anywhere there was water that it affected it. Not just in the sea, but around around the sea, or in the on the land itself. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so that fell upon a third of every. So you see, it's coming in thirds here: uh, the, the third of the sea, then the third of the rivers, and so forth are, are damaged. And the name of a star which is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters came uh, became Wormwood, and many men died in the waters because they had made because they were made bitter. Now I've been listening. I've listened to him, and I tend to agree with him in some respects. But uh, I'll tell you this, and I, and and it's this information is uh, uh, is. Is backed up by NASA, but there uh, and uh, he's written a book. I don't know. Maybe some of you know him. You've heard of Tom Horn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've heard of Tom Horn. Yeah. He's written a book, and it's called the book title. Of the book is Wormwood. Uh, Wormwood. Let's see if I can get a, get in the uh, mem uh, uh, 
It means it basically means bitterness is what the word means. And of course, it made all the all the things that were bitter. But he has written a book, and I ain't going to go into all. Uh, it's a little bit well. I don't know really how to explain it. But what he's he has he's had he had a vision, if you will, of uh, first of all of the uh, pope. Remember the last pope resigned, mm -hmm. and he resigned. Well, this this guy Tom Horn had had a vision that he was going to resign, and he wrote it in a book that it was going he was going to resign, and it, he told when it was going to happen on uh, a certain year. I don't remember what it is in the book. And it, that time come, people told him he's crazy. Don't do that. Time come, and nothing happened. And they got after him. He said, "See, I told you he wasn't. You shouldn't have put that in the book. You put a date in there, and ain't nothing he could say." But a year later the Pope did resign, or six, eight months later, the Pope did resign. You remember when the Pope resigned? Uh, several years ago. And come to find out that he had officially resigned a few months earlier, which was the date that Tom Horn had given. So it's interesting that he had, and he said his, his phone started ringing off the hook because people wanted to know how he knew that. Uh, he said it was just a, simply a vision from the Lord, is what he said. But he's had another vision. The reason I say that is, is to kind of qualify this next vision. He's had a vision of a what he what he called uh, a. He said when he first seen it, it looked like a serpent in the in the in the heavens, but then he said he got closer and he could see that it wasn't a serpent, but it was a as a it was a asteroid or, or that kind of thing. And and he and he had heard one word, and the word was apoph apophis. Well, it come to find out that NASA has has seen that asteroid, and they named it Apophis. That NASA did. Well, that NASA, NASA says that that's supposed to be a uh, in the year two thousand uh, twenty twenty nine. It's supposed to make a very close pass to the Earth, and 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 uh, he's. He says that it's not going to make a pass. It's going to impact the Earth in 2029. And he says that uh, 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 the basic word of apophis is the same meaning as Apollo. Or it comes from the root of Apollo, basically. I don't think I'm weirding out on this, but NASA has backed it up that the thing is coming. And it's been named by NASA as Apollo or apophis. And it's supposed to make a very close pass to Earth, and he the, the date is April the Friday, April the thirteenth, two thousand twenty nine. That's when he says it's going to impact the Earth, and we'll know more about it as time progresses, I guess, if NASA tells us. But that is that is a, a going that is a, a, a when he saw it, the word worm would come. So it could be that that's the same the same uh, asteroid that's coming here that's talking about here. I'm just giving this a speculation now. You know, I'm not saying that it's being fulfilled, but it's something that you should keep your eyes and ears open to over the next year. He thinks he he still thinks it's going to impact it. NASA is saying it's a very close pass because they don't want to panic people. But but he says it's going to impact the Earth, and irregardless, it whatever it is, it's going to bring a lot of uh, it's big enough to cause a lot of damage if it does impact the earth. And so he's thinking that that may be uh, the worm, the worm we're just talking here. If it is, now, get this, if, and I put a big if here, if it is, that means that in 2029, this, this will be taking place. If that's the case, in 2029, we will be in the tribulation. You, you, see, my, you see my meaning here? That means that uh, it'll already be started by that time. He backed it up three and a half years from April the 13th, 2029 to 2025, I think it is, three and a half years, and it, it's, it lands exactly on, uh, I can't remember now, one of the Feast of Israel, that's a, three and a half years prior to that. And if that's the case, that that would mean that that would be when uh, the... Uh, uh, tribulation would start. But that's again, that's speculation. But it's interesting because he was correct on the one about the the uh, Pope. 
That's why it gives it a little credence when you start listening to it. But anyhow, uh, then, but then that this this wormwood affects the waters, affects the waters of the of the rivers, the waters of the sea, uh, and it uh, bit, makes them bitter. And it says people died, but, uh, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. I don't know. I don't know if that means they couldn't drink it or if it made them sick. But that many people died from it. Then the verse 12 says, And the fourth angel sounded, a th sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars, so that a third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Uh, this is affecting, many people believe that this is an effect of whatever happened maybe with, with uh, that previous asteroid or whatever it is that was thrown in the sea affected the uh, atmosphere. So you couldn't, you couldn't see, uh, the day would be darkened, and it don't necessarily mean it would be dark for a third of the day and then bright. It means that it would be, the light would be decreased by one third. It would be, in other words, it would be like kind of like, like an overcast over, over, uh, sky all the time. <clears throat> and it showed, and, but anyhow, a third of all this, this is uh, of all these different things, it talks about a third of it. And then it said, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices, of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound. All right. There's an angel comes through and he's saying, All right, this is just a sample. What's really coming, what's coming next is much worse. He issues these three woes um, uh, for what is about to take place on the last three trumpets. Any comments? Anybody, anything? You think this will affect the time? Hit the time at any time today? It could be, yeah. Uh, because uh, it could. It, I don't know. I, I know. I know it affected one time. One time because the Lord Himself said. All, it, uh, that he would shorten it. I don't know if he's talking about shortening time or shortening the period of days. He said, he said that he would, he would shorten it himself. Uh, if he didn't, all flesh would be destroyed on the face of the earth if he didn't do it. Now, that's the way I do know that, uh, that he shortens, it, shortens the time. I can't remember where that scripture's at, but Jesus said that himself. Uh, and how it could affect, uh, you're talking about the time, like, the period of 24 hour periods. Yeah, days. Yeah, shortens the days. It could be that it shortens the day. If that's the case, I'm gonna weird you out here again a little bit because you remember back back in the Old Testament when uh, uh, when the, the Lord turned up, you know, they were fighting and the Lord stopped the sun and actually one place he had it to move back. The Lord changed time then. Uh, what I mean by that was before that, I believe that there was the day, the years were 360 days, exactly 360 days. And whatever the Lord done at those time periods changed it. And it could have been, it could have been uh, also had an effect when uh, uh, during the uh, flood, they, it got changed. But anyhow, the days now are 365 and a quarter days is what a year is now. So the Lord changed time then. And uh, and the way he did it was was you know in order to make the sun stop, what would have to happen? The, the sun don't stop. The the Earth would have to quit turning, or for it to go backwards, it'd have to turn and go back the other way. So I think something happened on the Earth at that time that caused the the the, the rotation of the Earth to, to actually I guess that would be to. Let's think on that a minute. Let's speed up or slow down. Speed up, I guess, in order to get 365 days. In other, well, in other words, the Earth to go around the sun before that, it, it spins 360 times as it goes around the sun. But now it's spending 365.4 days for it to go around. So it'd be slowing it down, I guess it would be. I can't explain it. Uh, I just can't explain it, okay? But it is scientifically proven and I think it's Joshua that was fighting the battle where mm -hmm. the sun stood yeah. still or whatever, that there was an, um, 
a relationship between Mars and Earth that caused that to happen. Yeah. And it's been scientifically proven that it happened at that time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons. That brings up another little issue because when, Ma when Mars used to, well, Mars is called the planet of war, the red planet. Mm -hmm. Why is it called that? It's called that because it used to have a different orbit. Yeah, it did. It used to have a different orbit and it brought it real close to the earth every once in a while. And, and people would get scared when they seen that, that Mars getting close to the earth. Well, what happened was it got real close at one time. That, that's when it happened. And it affected the rotation of the earth in some and form or fashion. it affected Mars orbit as well. Mm -hmm. They changed it all. It don't that. happen like it used to now. I can't really explain what you call all that, but it is a scientific fact. Again, yeah. proof of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Goes right wrong along with what happened. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, what I'm saying is, it used to be 360 days in a year. Now you say, well, that means the days, are, the the uh, the time period is shorter. No, but if 360 days, that means the Earth spins 360 times in a year. But it still takes the same amount of time for it to go around the sun. So the the year is still the same length. It's just the days are a little longer. I guess it would be, yeah. The days would be just a little bit longer. That's where we get, that's where the Bible, if you look at the, the feast and the calendars and all that, it's based on 360 days. That's called a biblical year, 360, not 365. But anyhow, uh, what's happening here is a third of the whole earth is becoming, uh, is being judged in this period of time. It says, whoa, 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 three woes until the inhabitants of the earth. Now, you have to understand, that's a, that is an angel <clears throat> that's proclaiming God's wrath. It's not, just a, it's not just a conjecture. People will know that it's taking place. Um, I can't explain how all, this was, how all this will take place, but I believe it will take place. Let's put it like that. Anybody got any other comments? Concerning chapter eight, it's a quick chapter, but it got rid of it. Got rid. It went through several of the trumpets, but the last three are going to be much worse. Any comments? We've got time to get started in the next chapter. All right, chapter nine. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. And to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. This is really a strange verse. It says, an, I, The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven and in, unto the earth. And to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. Now, it's a, it's a star that falls, but then it calls him a him. So who is this? What, what is this fifth angel? It sounds, and, it, and I saw a star fall. Well, this is one of the reasons why I say stars sometimes are equate, you can equate them to angels. Uh, and it was given to him, given to him, the star, him, was given the key to the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit is a place where, where I believe, well, let's go ahead and look at the next verse and then we'll look at it, it'll maybe make it a little bit more. And it, and it said, he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, and as pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke in the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts, and upon the earth and unto them were given power as scorpions uh, of, of the earth, Scorpions of the earth have power. All right, now I'm going to stop. I'm, now I'm going to back up and look at these. Uh, look at this bottomless pit and this angel. This angel uh, is opened up. This bottomless pit. Now, what is where does this bottomless pit come from, or what, what, what's the deal with this bottomless pit? Well, I believe uh, I'm going to get weird out on you a little bit here again. This is a weird weird out time today, I guess. But when the flood happened. Uh, a lot of a lot of some don't, but a lot of a lot of us believe that before the before the flood, the reason the the reason the flood occurred is because all uh, the Lord had to destroy all flesh. 
because they had gotten perverted. They had gotten messed up. Now, what do I mean by perverted and messed up? Well, you read, you read uh, Genesis chapter 6, and this is a very uh, controversial chapter. It's, when, it, it's right before the flood when men uh, uh, were, were, I believe, now this is my, my it talks about the, uh, the Nephilim, which, is, uh, which, which, which means basically giants. It says the scripture in chapter 6 says there were giants on earth at that time. I believe there was. I take the word of God for what it says. Uh, but some people will try to uh, try to, to back out of that. But they, uh, but if you read chapter 6, it says the sons of God, uh, sons of God. In other words, that means angels, basically. And I believe it's fallen angels. Uh, intermingled with the daughters of men. Or, or women, basically, and they and it brought about a hybrid, which would be a uh, the giants, and the Lord, and that's why one of the main reasons why the Lord had to destroy the earth to kill that off. Uh, it became um, it was like a what they're it's, it's like what they're trying the scientists are trying to do now. They're trying to uh, deal with uh, uh, genetics and have genetic engineering of different species. And that's basically what happened then. Uh, that's, where, that's where a lot of the stories of the, the Greek uh, came from about the gods and, uh, and all that. They come from all that. And, and Hercules is supposed to be this, this, the real strong man that was the son of a woman, uh, son of a, a woman and a god. Uh, it, it just goes on and on about what all took place on the earth at, at that time. That's why God had to destroy the earth. That's why. Uh, but it said the scripture in chapter 6 says that uh, that uh, uh, Noah was found uh, perfect in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, and he, was, he found grace and he was perfect. In other words, he was perfect in all his generations. What that means is that he wasn't his his DNA wasn't corrupted, and he and so his DNA wasn't corrupted. That's why the Lord saved and Noah, but the rest of the earth was going to be destroyed because all the DNA of all the earth just before the flood was corrupted. <clears throat> it was a <clears throat> a hybrid type DNA, and God had to destroy it. And <clears throat> anyhow, you remember they lived a lot longer then too. You remember that before the flood. All this took place. And so uh, when God destroyed all those, uh, to get back to where we're at here in the scripture, when God destroyed all those uh, giants and so forth, those Nephilim, if you will, what did their, they weren't, they, uh, they had a spirit. It was an evil spirit, but they had a spirit. God cast them, I believe, into this bottomless pit, the spirits of those. Now, some of them are are still are uh, are not the, again. I'm getting you wrong now. The spirits of the fallen angels were cast in the pit, but some of the spirits of the uh, Nephilim are still effective on the earth. And you know what we call them? Demons. That's where the demons come from. Uh, they are the spirits of the Nephilim that the Lord destroyed with the flood. But anyhow, this bottomless pit is about to be opened. And what's coming out of it is uh, is evil and, and destruction. But it's all, what's also coming out of it is these creatures, these locusts upon the earth. And unto them were given power as scorpions uh, of the earth have power. In other words, they have power to sting. I believe these scorpions and these thing, locusts that come out of the bottomless pit are, the, are these angels that were cast into the bottomless pit during the flood. Uh, they were destroyed. Are not destroyed. Let me give one other little one other little tidbit here. You have to understand, we're mortal, or we were born mortal. The angels and the false and the fallen angels are immortal; they can't die. So God has to have a different way of dealing with them, and this bottomless pit is one of those ways that He dealt with them. There'll be another way that He'll de He'll deal with them with Satan when He will change Satan and His angels. For a thousand years, when Jesus rules and reigns, that he will deal with them. But at the very end of the thousand years, I'm getting kind of ahead of myself, 
he's going to cast them into the lake of fire. See, they can't die because they're immortal. So God has to deal with them in a different way. Uh, and so, and so that's, that's what we're seeing here is taking place. These scorpions that have been chained up or locked up in this bottomless pit, this, these scorpions, which what I think is, is, is uh, fallen angel spirits, they will be loosed on the earth. So verse, we're going to, let's look at, I'm going to read verse 4 and then we'll stop. It says in verse 4, kind of give you a little bit of idea. And it came, and it, and it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any, neither any grass, green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. You see what I'm saying? That their, own, their only thing that they can do is hurt the people that have not been saved, basically, that have not been sealed by the Lord. That's all that they can do. And so they can't harm the earth or anything at that period of time. And we'll look at a little, little bit more because we're going to have to uh, next week. Uh, but I probably totally confused everybody this week. Uh, we'll pick it up at ch chapter 9, verse 4 next week. But anybody got any comments on that? I take it, I take the, um, you might, there's a lot of people that will take this and they'll, they'll try to spiritualize all of it and say that it, it, you know, it just happens in the spirit world, but I don't believe that. I believe what it says here will happen is what will happen. Well, evidently, we'll still be here doing that. Uh, I don't think so. But it says that there's someone here that has the seal of God in their forehead. Yeah, I think that will be the one, the 144,000. Remember, they were sealed. Yeah. And uh, so I believe that's who that's who that that's talking about. And their converts. Yeah, and those and those that come come into the kingdom by their by their uh, testimony. But uh, but we won't. I don't believe the church will be here at that time. That's the reason why somebody if a person ever says, "Well, I'm going to wait till I see all that happen, and now I'm going to be," so they'll be saying they, they don't know what they're talking about. Grand they, delusion. Huh? Grand delusion. Grand, grand delusion. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, one other thing I'll say on this too, and it, and it kind of fits in. You know, there's a lot of notice how much on television and so forth. Or maybe you don't watch it. I don't know. There is about these um, ancient aliens and uh, uh, UFOs and stuff like that. That's 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 going to be a lot of that delusion that you're talking about, because they're they're putting it out like they're trying to explain everything that even they're even now they're trying to explain the things that happened in the bible as being aliens and not god and not the angels and so forth uh, and they're really they're really pushing it and what's going to happen after the rapture after we're gone then they're going to have the total and complete explanation for everything that's, that takes place they're going to have the explanation for the rapture oh they were taken out by aliens because they they they're, because they're backward Huh? The undesirable. Yeah, they're going to be taken out by the aliens because they were backward and they didn't understand that we're evolving into a new creature, and and so this is they're using they're using all this alien stuff, and they will use it especially after the rapture to explain all that takes place, but that's not what's going to, that's not what take place. Uh, they're going to come they're going to go through what we're reading about, and it won't be pleasant. Any comments, anything you would like to add? Doctor, what was the name of the book and the author that you were talking uh, about? The author is Tom Horn. And the name of the book, I believe... Woodworm, didn't you say? Huh? Did you say it was Woodworm? Woodworm. Uh, uh, wormwood. Wormwood. Yeah, I believe the name of the book is Wormwood. I believe that's the name of the book. It's, got, it's dealing with them. But... He, but, uh, but uh, it's interesting to listen to that fellow. I've listened to him on television several times to explain that. And he's just as serious as he can be. And uh, and he got a lot of calls from a lot of people after he predicted the Pope would resign. And, of course, he they thought that he didn't resign, but he actually did. Uh, but he did, he, did it, he did it privately for about six months. Uh, until uh, until he they come out openly and said I resigned back in April of so and so. But this is 
not that related to it, but it's a little bit of humor. Bob worked with a fellow that had just a little mental problems, but uh, he predicted that the end time was coming such and such a day. Yeah. And, you know, was very vocal about this. So Bob and some of the other that worked with him said, well, if you believe this so firmly, said, let's take your money and have a really good party before this happens, you know. But he didn't share his money. He didn't share his money. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people, and, and there's a lot of people seriously try to predict it. And I'm, don't get me wrong, when I talked about that, Apo, that Apollo, I'm not trying to predict anything. But I'm just saying there's, there's an indication that something's going to take place. And I believe that, it, that we're, in this particular decade, there's going to, a lot's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what exactly, but I, think, uh, I feel a lot's going to take place in this decade. Now, whether it's, whether it's with what I talked about earlier or not, I don't know. But uh, a, a lot has happened in our nation over the last six, uh, uh, four years, hadn't it? Four or five years. It wasn't that long ago that uh, uh, it wasn't that long ago that that uh, marriage was considered to be a, a a very important thing. Now they've watered it down to where anything you can marry a dog or something if you want to. I mean, it, it's just it's just it's just ridiculous. And and uh, anyhow, anyhow, it's something to think about and something to be on the be on the lookout for. And don't let, don't, just like Jesus said, don't let anything uh, surprise you to be ready. And I think that's the most, most important thing. All right, let's have a word of prayer and then we will, we will be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, again, we praise your name for who you are. For you, the great and mighty king of this universe, and all power is in your hands. And when we look at these things that are taking place in, the, in, your, in your word in the book of Revelation, the Father, that we will, uh, we will, our spirits will be open to under, not just to understand, but to be spiritually attentive to what's taking place. And Father, that, uh, uh, that the blessing that you promised uh, for, from the reading of the book of Revelation will be a blessing to all of us. And Father, may we be ob obedient in, in, uh, in reading it and looking at it without changing, Father, but with, uh, with, uh, uh, with trying to seek your will out of it. And we just praise you, Father, for it. And, Father, I pray a blessing over everyone here this morning, that you will bless, guard, and keep them. Yevarecha Adonai v'ish marecha. Yeer Adonai panavilecha v'ilkanecha. Yesa Adonai panavilecha v'asim lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. And as always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever heard uh, Tom Horn speak? Uh, only have you on just TV. Read? Uh, only on, on TV. TV. He's, got, he's got that program now, Skywatch. I don't know if you've ever watched it on, uh, it's on cable. Okay. I maybe have hey, uh, I don't have a regular uh -huh. He's got a new thing out, a DVD out. And I haven't got it lately. I, I really prefer the book. And it's a DVD. Uh -huh. But it's supposed to be about some of this stuff too. Have yep. you seen that?